गुड इवनिंग एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू द ब्लैक होल आज का सेशन साइबर सिक्योरिटी से मुतलिक है जाहिर है कि पर्सनल इंफॉर्मेशन या डाटा को सेफ गार्ड करना या अपनी प्राइवेसी को मेनटेन रखना बहुत क्रूशल है बहुत ऑनलाइन एंड ऑफ लाइन एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ टू शील्ड वंस डेटा एंड प्राइवेसी फ्राम इवॉल्विंग साइबर थ्रेट्स इंक्लूडिंग मैन इन द मिडल अटैक्स वायर टैपिंग एंड मोनिटरिंग सो इन शॉर्ट इट इज़ अबाउट how one can protect one's digital footprints uh, we are very glad we are very glad to have altumish khan atish with us mere daaye jane wa aap tashreef farmaye atish is a seasoned game designer with extensive experience in it having led game design teams at the game storm studios and epsilogix aapke credit mein uh, more than 100 apps hain across android ios and pc aur आई टी के ऊपर आपकी भरपूर दस, दस्तरस है लिहाजा आज के सेशन में उम्मीद है कि मुझे भी सीखने को मिलेगा और आपको भी सीखने को मिलेगा इतने अहम मौजू के मतलब आप सब लोगों की आमद का शुक्रिया प्लीज़ टर्न जो सेल फोन टू साइलेंट मोड सो दैट देर इज़ नो डिस्ट्रैक्शन मोर ओवर जाहिर है हमेशा की तरह हाउस ओपन होगा फॉर इंट्रैक्शन तो आप लोग भी अपने सवाल अपने तबसरे अपने जो आपकी राय हो वो आप सामने लाइएगा लेकिन प्लीज़ रेज योर हैंड फर्स्ट सो दैट दिस माइक्रोफोन इज़ गिवन टू यू तो यही थी दो तीन बातें प्लीज वेलकम अल्तमुश खान आतिश थैंक यू हेलो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट बाय टेकिंग लुक एट सॉफ्टवेयर हार्डवेयर एंड फर्मवेयर ओके द प्रॉब्लम इज मोस्ट पीपल टॉक अबाउट सॉफ्टवेयर एंड हाउ सोशल मीडिया एंड ब्राउजर्स हाउ दे कैन क्रैक अस हाउ दे कैन टेक आवर डेटा एंड यूज इट सेल्फ टू थर्ड पार्टीज वी आर नॉट रिली be focusing on that we will be talking about mostly the departments that can invade your privacy we will be talking more about that and also how you can shield yourself better now being absolutely like um uh trying to absolutely secure yourself you will have to leave the internet altogether which is not really a possibility most of us cannot just uh, live without the internet these days however the problem is that we can limit the amount of data that is being collected we can safeguard ourselves and this is what we are going to speak about we have software most people talk about software browsers social media they don't talk about hardware the problem is that the hardware that we use you know that it is a piece a piece of hardware which is running the computer running a system running anything that you may require however most people do not know about firmware and the problem with proprietary firmware proprietary firmware is basically the firmware the code that you cannot take a look at firmware uses code but it's code that you cannot take a look at so you do not know what it's doing intel and amd have firmware proprietary firmware and when the us departments when they take these products when they buy these products when they use these products they specifically tell intel and amd to take that firmware out and the reason for that is not because the firmware itself might be a problem it is that it is it has the ability to transfer your data anywhere when when your system is processing data that firmware is keeping a track of what you're doing and since it's connecting to the internet we don't really know where that data goes but we do know that if there's a problem with the hardware all of your data can be compromised and that's the reason why most departments in the US when they take intel and amd systems they tell the companies to strip that firmware out and that's that's how they use it now with firmware you also have other devices which you might be using in your in your house there are there is the internet of things connected devices and the problem with connected devices is that if the firmware you do not you cannot take a look at the code then the problem is that that code can do basically anything and you are literally relying on the companies or the people that have given you that firmware that they're not going to do anything wrong with with the data or they don't have are and they're not linked to any department departments can also have departments can basically tell those companies that listen we will allow you to 
sell your hardware, but you will give us backdoor access. And that is a problem for people who do not want other departments to have a look at their data. So backdoors are basically a problem, even if it's not on the software level, on the hardware level, it is possible that somebody's spying on you. But it is very difficult to get rid of spyware at the hardware level. There are companies, System76 and Purism, that they try to strip the firmware out as much as possible without damaging the hardware itself. The problem is that um, Purism and System76, their laptops and computers are very expensive. However, they also use free software and they basically encourage their users to use free software, free software I'm going to speak about. But Purism and System76 are alternatives that you can use if you're concerned about spyware at the hardware level as they make things difficult. They probably might not be able to remove all the code, but they remove most of it. And that's the reason why most free software enthusiasts use it. We're going to move up a level. We are going to go to software through, sorry, uh, pri uh, spying through software. We're going to take a look at that. Most of the software that you use on a daily basis, it is proprietary. You cannot take a look at the code, and it does not offer you the freedom that free software gives to you. Free software is not the software that you do not pay for. Free software is free as in freedom, which is it gives you the freedom to take a look at the code, do whatever you want with the code, repackage the code and distribute it, and also force the other person who has modified your code to release the code that they have modified. So that is free software. And open source is also another type of software, but um, Open source philosophy is different. Free software philosophy is different. Open source software is me putting my code on the internet so everybody can take a look at it and contribute to it to help me improve my software. That is the philosophy. The, the philosophy of free software is that the user should be in control of the program. The program should not be in control of the user. So that is basically the difference be between free and open source software. So how is, how is spying conducted at the software level? If you cannot take a look at the code, you cannot tell what it's doing with your data. And whatever data, whatever, whatever you're writing, whatever you're typing, you have got no idea what they're doing with the data. Even if they do not plan to use it, the problem with uh, proprietary software is that if it's vulnerable to attacks, you wouldn't know. Whereas in free software, it's usually community driven. Most free software is driven by community. It has thousands, maybe 10,000 eyes looking at the code. If they find a vulnerability, they will patch it. With proprietary software, you're literally relying on a dozen team members, sometimes maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand people, and you're relying on them that listen, the software that I'm using, is it free from vulnerabilities? I hope it is, because I'm going to use it and all of my data is going to be on this, on this hardware, just protect it. But with free software, if you're a programmer, you yourself can take a look at the code and find whether there's a vulnerability or not. Another thing about free software is that when you take a look at the code, you'll be able to tell what it is doing with your data. And when you're using software, which operating systems like Windows 10, Windows 11, Mac OS, all of these are proprietary. Their code is not open. Whereas most GNU Linux distributions, their code is open, and you will know exactly what that code is doing, how it's running on your machine. You know that. In order to prevent, uh, in order to prevent spying at the software level, you will start. You will need to start using free software, and freedom respecting programs, which which. First of all, you'll have to reinstall your OS operating system, which is going to be the GNU plus Linux, any of the GNU plus Linux distributions. That will help you ensure that all of the, uh, all of the operating system's code is free for the public. It is unlikely that they're spying on you, very unlikely. In fact, if, if, if they actually start spying, the Linux community is going to go crazy. They, they don't like any kind of code which is spying on the user. They hate it. So they're going to go absolutely crazy. And there are 
certain distributions of Linux that will only give you software that is completely free from spying. So the, so uh, the software that doesn't spy on you is only allowed in their, in their repositories, and you can only download the software that will definitely not spy on you. Now let's take a look at uh, the internet and how the browsers can basically track you and take a look at your behavior. The problem isn't really with the browsers. The problem is that your data is somewhere. And when you're connecting to, to the internet, the man in the middle attack is connected when you, uh, is, is done. The man in the middle attack is done when your computer is going to connect to your internet service provider and send data. People in the middle can actually get that data and they can take a look at what you're doing. It's very difficult, especially if you're, if you're, use, if you're using a website that is secure. It is difficult, but it's possible, especially if you connect to public Wi-Fi. On public Wi-Fi, it, it, everybody says that you should connect to, to a VPN because when you're connecting to the VPN, the hacker or the man in the middle can only take a look at your connection with the VPN. It cannot, it, the hacker cannot tell which website you're visiting, what you're doing, and um, what web pages you're visiting, and, uh, and any of your internet data. The hacker cannot take a look at it. What they know is that you've connected to the VPN server, and that's the only thing that they know. But they do not know exactly which web pages you're visiting. The man in the middle attacks can also be done if, you're, if somebody has software level access to your computer or hardware level access to your computer. So this, if you're really concerned about your privacy, it is a good idea to first secure yourself at the hardware level and then the operating system level so that the operating system does not have any spyware inside of it. Then we're going to move on to proprietary software, which I've already spoken about, but it is the software which people will tell you that they are collecting your data. The problem is you're relying on them. Like all of these proprietary softwares, uh, Windows 11, Mac OS, you're, if you're using Photoshop, if you're using any of the many proprietary softwares that we use uh, on a daily basis. Most of them are collecting your data. YouTube, the YouTube application is collecting your data. Now, of course, it isn't sensitive, but a person, let's suppose, wants to get some information about what you like and what you dislike and wishes to use it to manipulate you, make you do something, probably make you say something, they can take a look at your data that you have on YouTube and get an idea of what kind of things you like and what kind of things you don't like. YouTube, unfortunately, is if you're really concerned about your privacy, most people that are on, on Linux and they are really concerned about their privacy use YouTube in a different way. They don't visit the YouTube website, rather they use software, free software, that will help them take YouTube videos out, download them so they can watch them offline. Now that is very difficult for YouTube to know or keep a track on your behavior, especially if you're using a VPN or something that I'll speak about, which is called the Tor network. If you're using a VPN or Tor network, they will not be able to tell who you are, what you're doing, and what is your behavior. They won't be able to track it. Now, the problem isn't YouTube. The problem is what if somebody gets access to your YouTube data? What if a department gets access to your behavior? Then it becomes a problem because these companies, they sometimes need the data to serve, help, you, help serve you better, to make, to make your experience using it better. However, since we do not know how these companies work, they might be selling your data to third parties. And the bigger the company is, the more likely it is that it's connected to some sort of department. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the Tor browser, which is something that departments even use. The Tor browser, or the Tor network, the Tor browser is a browser which connects to the Tor network. It's like a VPN, except that instead of going through one computer, it goes, to, it goes through three. So what happens is when you use the Tor browser, your computer connects to an entry node, which is one computer. It is encrypted, your data is encrypted, sent to another node, it's encrypted further, and then sent to an exit node. Now the Tor network, with the Tor network, you don't actually know the computers that are exchanging information, don't know where did this information come from. 
uh, where did this information came from. It on they only know where they have to send this information to. And if it's the exit node, then it only knows which data it has to send back. The problem is that since it is encrypted, it is very difficult for any department to tell where this information is going or where it's coming from or to, to, to get, it, they will not know what the location is. So the problem is that um, if you are, let's suppose, you are, you're working for, uh, you, uh, no, you're not working for, but you have a conversation that you want to keep private for some reason, you're talking to a loved one, you want to keep it very, very personal, and so it's a conversation that you do not want anybody to, like, uh, and if you're at school and somebody wants you to pr play a prank on you, and they know a bit about hacking and stuff, they can do a man-in-the-middle attack and get your data, right, and uh, your private conversation. In order to secure yourself, you need to use privacy respecting messaging apps like Signal or Session. Signal is a privacy respecting app. It's not like WhatsApp. Signal is free software. And it's so freedom respecting that, that when a US department asked for data for, 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 of a particular person, the only thing they could give is the account creation date the la and the last login date. That's the only thing they had. And that was by, by a US department that, that, that uh, subpoenaed signal to, to, to get the information. That's the only thing that they had. Now, session is signal. It's a fork of signal. I believe it's a fork of signal. And forking in, 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 in software is when you take free software, you copy it, and then, and, then you, and then you use, and then you repurpose it, and then sell it again. With signal, you're directly connecting to the data. Uh, you're di directly connecting to the internet. Whereas in session, you're connecting through the Tor network. So if you're connecting through the Tor network, not only are you using free software, you're also using so software that it will connect to the Tor network, thereby protecting you even better, even further. Now we're going to take a look at what you can do to connect to, to the Tor network while you're on the move. Let's say you're on the airport, you are traveling, or you're somewhere and you just don't want anybody to just attack you and take your data or send a virus to your computer or anything like that. There are some Linux distributions, GNU Linux distributions that run off a USB. And as soon as you take the USB out, all the data that is inside that USB gets reset. So let's suppose uh, you want to access your laptop and you're traveling. You can use Tails OS or Cubes OS. Let me speak about Tails OS first. It is an OS that as soon as you insert the USB into your laptop, boot it, that entire OS connects to the Tor network. There's nothing connected to the, to the in internet directly. It is a GNU Linux distribution. And everything that you store on Tails, as soon as you take the USB out, everything gets reset. The, the session is not restored. So when, if, you're, if you have any data saved, if you've done anything, if you've, if you've done any browsing, take out the USB, that data is gone. So you're absolutely, perfectly fine. Let's say, for example, you're using Tails OS on your computer exclusively. Somebody, uh, that laptop gets stolen. You don't have to worry about your data because if the laptop has been shut down, the next time the laptop opens, it's going, it's going to start from zero. Now, Cubes OS. Cubes OS is interesting. Not only does it connect to the Tor network, everything that runs inside of Cubes OS runs inside of a virtual machine. So not only is it connecting to the Tor network, but it doesn't even run on your computer. When you, when you, when you uh, run a program, it creates another computer in which that software runs. So now you've got more protection. Let's say, for example, the software is vulnerable. There is, there is a bug that a hacker can take advantage of. Well, now, if, even if they hack, hack that computer, that computer, that virtual machine, will not have access to your real computer. So with Cubes OS, you've got USB. You can boot it off USB. You've got connection to the Tor network. And all of your software is running through a virtual machine. Now we're going to take a look at what I call the best way to use a computer. Number one, GNU Linux or a free BSD operating system. Number two, try to use free software as much as you can. Number three, 
If you're using proprietary software, try to sandbox it some way. Let's take a look at sandboxing now. With sandboxing, you're basically running all of your software and compartmentalizing it by running it inside of a virtual machine. If you create a virtual machine on your computer that you're using right now, you can even run a Windows 10 virtual machine in your computer right now. So the thing is that since Windows is used by many people around the world, it has got the highest number of viruses as well. Let's suppose that your uh, school uh, schoolmate or your college mate just wants to play a prank and gives you a virus. If you run it on a virtual machine, that virtual machine will be infected. Your main machine will not be. So that is one of, one of the good things about a virtual machine, that if you run any malicious code, that virtual machine is going to get infected, but not your computer. As far as I can tell, I've, I have met quite a few people that have run a program that encrypted their entire computer. Now, what does encryption mean? Encryption is another thing that you can use to make sure that your data is saved. But hackers can also use it to make your life miserable. What they do is the program runs and it encrypts all of your data and now you cannot access it. Encryption is basically, well, encryption is basically taking your data and zipping it up and putting a, putting, putting a password on it. That's basically it for like, that's what encryption is basically. You can encrypt your files as well. You can encrypt your entire drive. So nobody can access it if they get their hands on it unless they have the password, unless they have the key. So that is one other way that you can secure yourself even further. You might have seen encrypted hard drives that if you open up the laptop, they ask you for a password. I'm not talking about user account password. I'm talking about unlocking the hard, hard drive. It happens at boot. So the problem is that if it happens at boot, if they ask you for a password at boot, that means the hard, hard drive is encrypted. So if somebody even gets hold of your hard drive, they're going to have a very, very difficult time trying to decrypt it because running decryption algorithms is expensive, it's costly, and it's time consuming. Like it's, it's not something that a person would do it, unless they really, really want to get hold of your data and nobody would want to make that effort. They will usually use uh, techniques such as phishing to get your, get your data, which we'll speak, uh, speak about later. So encryption is another way you can make sure that your data is secure and it's, 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 a, and it's gonna be very difficult for people to get hold of your data. Now I was talking about software software, free software, proprietary software. Let's talk about monitoring through hardware, software, and ecosystem, all of these. Now, ecosystem is not something that I spoke about, but let's, let's, let's uh, take a look at Apple users. Apple users use Mac, they use iPhone, and they use the iCloud, and all of the Apple products. Now, if the data is leaked at one location, guess what? They have got all of your data on, on uh, that that is on your other 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 computers and hardware and phones. Now the problem with these phones that we use is that you don't really know whether the mic is off or not, and that is something that many people say: is the mic actually off? If you're really concerned about your privacy, you will use a freedom respecting Android system on a phone that offers you to kill the mic, the camera the speakers, anything that you want, even the screen. And there are phones that are built for that. There are privacy respecting phones that are expensive that you can get. Those phones have got kill switches. They literally have kill switches which will help you disable the camera, disable the mic, disable anything, any piece of hardware that you want on that phone. And they sometimes use Graphene OS, sometimes they use other Android respect, uh, other freedom respecting Android systems. I, I know about Graphene OS, but there must be others. And you can even use that on your phone right now, but there are certain, those freedom respecting Android systems don't work on every single phone. And if you fail in getting that software installed on your phone, but then your phone becomes a very expensive paperweight, basically, because it, it fails. So that's what happens. Yeah, it becomes a brick. It's called bricking, basically. You brick your computer. So that's what happens. So if you really, really, really are concerned about your privacy, then you can use a privacy respecting phone which has kill switches, which uses a free operating system. And at the hardware level, their firmware is also free. So you can take a look at it. 
and you can make sure that you're not being monitored. There are other things that you can use on your phone. There are applications which can help you connect to the Tor network, which will stop you from being monitored, and you can also use VPNs. So that, that is available on phones. Then there are other phones as well, which uh, the, the US president uses. And uh, I believe that not only the US president, but most of the departments in the US use as well. They have a phone. And the company doesn't even tell them where, what the location, where their data center is. They just, they just turn it on, that mode, the privacy mode on. And all they can do is they can just call and they can just, uh, uh, they can have text messages that completely like, you're completely cut off from the internet and you're directly connected to, the, to their data center. And nobody knows where that data center is. So there are phones like that as well. But that, that they are super expensive. Like I think they go up to $20,000, $30,000, those kind of phones. But uh, US departments use it. So hardware, software, firmware. Now let's take a look at viruses and how various departments can actually crack you by bugging you or your friends can bug you, your friends can, your friends can put a virus, your friends can put key loggers in. How do you avoid that? First of all, use messaging services that do not allow such such programs to run, which can act as key loggers, do not click suspicious links, and definitely do not fill out forms without looking at where that form is from. So your friend, in order to get your password, may send you a link, which goes to a Facebook page, but it's not exactly a Facebook page. It's a copy of Facebook page where you enter your password, they take your credentials, put it on Facebook, log you in, but they also have your passwords and, 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 and everything that you, that you have. So that is one way somebody can prank you. There's, that's one way somebody can basically hurt you. And this is called phishing. Sometimes there's also co something called social engineering where people might pretend to be some, uh, like from this department or that department, get data from you and then they will, they will use it. So this is how most attacks on companies are done. They're done through social engineering where somebody from maintenance is going to call a worker and say, I'm from maintenance, give me access to this. That, social, uh, that worker gives access to that maintainer who is actually a hacker and, uh, and, and the company ends up being hacked. This, is, this has happened numerous times. That is social engineering where you basically pretend to be somebody that you are not. And that, that is basically the hacker. So if they get your data that way, that is basically like, that is a human error. You can't, there, there is no, like you have to educate yourself and you have to know what is, what link is suspicious, which, what, how people can attack you and what methods they use. And cybersecurity and cybersecurity children are taught to look for these links and they have, they have a complete system. I'm working with a client right now who's into cybersecurity and they have this, a uh, game where children can learn which links they should click and which links which links they should not. If somebody is if somebody comes to them and says that I'm from I'm from this 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 department this 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 is my this is my occupation. Uh, give me access to your computer. I need to fix this. And then you have to tell tell whether that person is really from that company from the department or that person is not. So you have to be careful about these things. So I've covered most of these things, uh, most of the things that people can use to attack you, especially man the middle attacks are especially difficult to basically prevent unless you know for certain that the, uh, the internet that you're connecting to is secure. And if you think it's not secure, then it's a good idea to connect through the Tor network or through a VPN. But man the middle attacks are very difficult to prevent and monitoring is also very difficult to prevent in the in the in in the in the uh, times that we live in today. If you're on the internet, you can also use browsers such as GNU IceCat and LibreWolf, which is, which are privacy respecting uh, browsers. And IceCat is a very special browser as it rejects any page that is running any kind of proprietary code, including proprietary JavaScript code. If it detects that the website that you're visiting does not have does not have free code then it's not going to load it at all it's not going to load it at all first it checks whether that website has free software or not whether the code is free if it's not you'll get a blank page that website is not going to run 
Another thing that you can do is instead of vis visiting websites directly, you can use software that downloads the data and shows it on your local computer. That way, the downloaded data, they might be able to tell where, who has requested, where they have requested data from, but it is unlikely that they'll make such a gargantuan effort to find out who is, who is downloading this data, especially if you connect it through a VPN or to, or to the Tor network. So instead of running things on the internet, you can also choose to run them on your local computer, save them and then run it, but download that data so that you can, you can view it later. We also spoke about privacy respecting phones. I think that everybody should have a phone that is privacy respecting. You should have your you should ha should have a kill switch which can kill your mic immediately when you don't when you're not using it. It's very important because somebody might be putting your playing your prank. Even if they are not, you basically I do not like the thing that somebody can basically listen to what I'm saying even even when uh, even when I'm basically just conversing. I don't want people to know my interests, what I do. I don't. I would not want that. Uh, it, it seems like like if I ask you for your phone, you wouldn't give it to me, right? Most of you will not, right? So, I mean, if somebody's monitoring, I don't like that, like that feeling. So anyway, base. Uh, so I've covered all of these things, but th if you are like really, really like into the free software movement, which uh, which which is Solomon has started, you're really, really into privacy. And you're really, really into the into this that I don't want to be monitored at all. It's very difficult, but just be on the internet less. That is that is the best way you can basically, uh, you know, be as as uh, you can keep your data as private as possible. But if you are if you really want to uh, secure your privacy, then it's going to take a very very big effort. And some people do not want to do that. If you use GNU Icecat, most of the websites that you'll visit, they will, they will not be available. YouTube will not be available. Facebook will not be available as they're using proprietary code. But there's a reason for that because GNU Icecat knows that if they're using proprietary code, it also means that they might be spying on you. And if they're spying on you, that data, if, if, if anybody hacks your Facebook account, they know exactly what kind of a person you are. And then they might even, even you know, use that data against you. They might hurt you. They might do these things. So just be careful. Uh, the one thing that I did not cover, which I'm going to cover right now, private, if you're concerned about privacy, take a look at the news, take a look at hardware vulnerabilities, software vulnerabilities, and get an idea of the GNU Linux operating system. If at the kernel level, if there is a bug, that bug can usually be exploited to insert a virus into the kernel, which will be at the very low zero ring. We call that zero ring at the zeroth link, which is basically the lowest lowest um, point in the operating system, which even antiviruses cannot detect. It runs at boot, so you wouldn't know that it's loaded. The virus is loaded at the boot, so you wouldn't you wouldn't know that. So keep yourself updated. Know what the software that you, you're using, whether it's vulnerable or not to attacks. Know that the hardware that you're using, whether that's vulnerable to attacks, and there have been instances where Intel and AMD have released chips which were vulnerable and they had to release firmware updates to, to get rid of those vulnerabilities. So be cautious. Just have a Google alert which will tell you about software vulnerabilities, hardware vulnerabilities, and also firmware vulnerabilities. So that will help you stop an attack or stop a potential attack because those bugs, those vulnerabilities, anybody can use. Anybody can use if they know what they're doing. And sometimes those vulnerabilities are so easy to exploit, they're unbelievably easy. So uh, in fact, there was a vulnerability that was lying in the Linux kernel for 10 years and nobody noticed, but it was never used but there was a vulnerability for 10 years. And I believe it was the XZ package. There is a package in Linux called XZ. I think it was the X XZ package. And we had a news article on it that this, this had a vulnerability we did not know, immediately update. So that they, they found it after 10 years that there was a vulnerability. So these things happen. Anyway, so now it's time for the Q&A session. I'd like to know what questions you have. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, 
active session is this one yeah. um, i guess other people might like you know uh, it's on it's on so other people might like you know go for these uh, freeware but for an average person i think it's too much of a hassle um, getting a like you know totally alien um, operating system because we're so used to windows now and uh, so what are um, the softwares common softwares we should avoid well, if, uh, since I am a free software adv advocate and I'm also, uh, I like open source software, the problem is that if you're really concerned about your fr freedom and you're really concerned about your privacy, uh, it takes an effort to basically prevent, the, uh, prevent access to your data. I know it is a lot for a, 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 a person, person, yeah, for an average person, it's a lot. But the problem is I cannot say which software you, you should use on a daily basis because if the spyware is on the operating system level, there's not, it doesn't matter what software you're using. Mm -hmm. If the operating system itself is proprietary and it itself is most likely has a backdoor mm -hmm. at which, pe which people can access, then it doesn't matter what software you're using. Basically, doesn't matter. So, if an average person is concerned about their privacy, they can make the effort. If they're not, then that's fine. I mean, uh, most people say that they have got nothing to hide, right? Exactly. Yeah, they still lock their doors. But uh, I mean, yeah. So, uh, like, it's it's uh, locking the door. I mean, it's become a habit for some people. It might that might be a difficult task. No, uh, for, <laughs> for a lazy sleep. person. Yeah, yes. for a lazy person. Yeah. <laughs> So, but the thing about Linux is that once you install the operating system, it becomes fun. Computing becomes fun. That's that's the, that's the good thing. Uh, it it also you, uh, Linux is also very fast moving. You get the latest technology. If you're if you're using Arch Linux, then you you're going to get the latest technology, the latest packages almost immediately. So that's fun for some people. But uh, if it's on the operating system level, if you're using Google Android, which is on the operating system level, it doesn't matter what software you're using because People can may have a backdoor. People may ha may be able to uh, companies may be might be able to use your data to sell it to third parties if they, if they are paid well for it. So, you know, so and that 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 uh, uh, whichever party it is, it can be any party. I'm not saying just to advertisers it can be any party. So that's the thing. Um, my question is actually quite simple. As you may know, if someone doesn't have a privacy like phone uh, and their mics are usually open and people can often hear them, as you may know, like if I'm talking to a friend and I mention something and next time I open Instagram or something, it's probably going to be on there an ad of the thing that I was talking about. So if you don't have a privacy iPhone, how do you actually prevent data from going to people? <coughs> Yeah, sure. What you can do is you can make a Faraday's cage and put your phone in it. Okay. Yeah, but but the pro the problem is with the Faraday's cage is that if you put your phone in a Faraday's cage, you might end up attracting more attention than you need because these these uh, the uh, the the phone is connected to the nearest tower. So when you get disconnected to the tower, it's kind of strange. They they find it, they find it strange that why is this person disconnecting and reconnecting over and over again? So it's it's it, you're attracting attention, but uh, it, yeah, yeah, there is no other way. There is basically no other way except if you put the phone inside of a soundproof Faraday's cage. Then you then you're basically secure. But there is no other way. There uh, the, uh, the the phones I'm talking about are actually quite fun. They are they they use use an operating system which is free, which means you will not have access to the Play Store. Unfortunately, you will have to use iDroid. I believe it's, I believe it's called uh, I believe it's called iDroid. I don't remember what the name of the store was, but the free soft uh, the, the free version of Android has its own version, its own store, and most of the software over there is free as well. So you're totally secure. Uh, one other thing that you can do is you can try to take the battery out of your phone, if, but phones do not allow that anymore, right? So that that's what we used to do at one time. I used to do it, but uh, when I found out that people can take uh, can listen to me using the mic, I, I it freaked me out. I said, "Oh, that, that's not right. I don't want I don't want uh, anybody to know like wh how I talk to my friends or you know how I converse. I don't like that. So yeah."
assalamu alaikum uh, actually there were phones like blackberry uh, they were not compromising their privacy to anyone even their state's departments so uh, they stopped working why so <laughs> oh, i mean i mean first of all blackberry if if you take a look at their business decision they were horrible like uh, you, you it's, it's been documented by cold fusion i believe that uh, the business decision that they were taking they were still not moving forward with the time whereas everybody else was and they they were basically the the thing is that at that time they were like first to market you can say with the types of phones that they have the problem is that they were pushing their os when android was getting very popular that was one of the decisions that they wanted to keep their classic look their blackberry look and people had moved on by then and uh, that was basically the problem but it is also true that if you're working in the us and you don't have a back door then it, unless you are linus torvald who's who's uh, Op, uh, whose kernel is being driven by the community you're going to be in trouble i'd i'd say so yeah actually uh, blackberry was not moving uh, their privacy policies to uh, like uh, android has uh, many issues and uh, like huawei recently has many problems while they were uh, uh, converting their own uh, operating system so they faced many issues just like uh, blackberry and they have stopped working in uh, pakistan even so uh, this was my question that uh, uh, these things doesn't work actually uh, when you have to try to avoid uh, your privacy from breaching you cannot actually this is impossible if you are on internet you cannot do something. yeah the that's the reason why i said if you're absolutely concerned yes. about privacy don't be on the internet yes indeed. yes and this and, is and, this is an absolute yeah the, don't be on the internet but the but the thing is that you can make life tough for the people that are wish uh, that wish to you know to, uh, you can make things tougher for them and but but, uh, but uh, the reason why you want to basically st- like most people have nothing to hide right but it doesn't feel right that people can listen to what i'm saying it is just doesn't feel right so if it's like uh, the privacy mindset if you if you have a privacy mindset then your life will automatically improve anyway because you will probably not be oversharing you'll not be talking about your plans you'll not be talking about details which other people should not know you will you will most likely uh, never be a people will never your friends will never be able to use anything against you in life so it's a it's a mindset basically where you stop sharing things which you don't really need to share you they're so personal that you just want to keep to yourself so but the problem is that yes it is almost impossible to stay uh, to keep your uh, to keep 100% private in this world but you can definitely be very close 80% 70% private if you if you stop using uh, proprietary stuff if you if you know that you're using an operating system that doesn't spy on you and if you're using hardware that doesn't have access to your personal data or what you say what you speak so that's it thank you very much uh just another question if um you're keeping a lot private your data everything your phone your system aren't you making others suspicious especially well, the departments like you know yeah. why is this person so private no 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 i, I don't think so like P- we connect to P- vpns all the time right it can also be because we don't want our data to be intercepted mm-hmm. like the like it is like i use a vpn but i don't use it mainly because i want to hide something i use it because i don't don't want to be attacked from the middle mm-hmm. like there can, a middleman attack can occur any time i just don't like that mm-hmm. like when you use a vpn people don't say this but your data is also encrypted So if somebody tries to uh tries to perform a man in the middle attack they will fail miserably because they won't be able to you know g- access that data is using vpn legal over here because I'm, there was I'm a not. time when uh, like you know there was news that you know you're not allowed to use vpn yeah you you in pakistan especially when they closed x so yeah. uh, i remember uh, hearing that you know you can't although everyone in the government was using x yeah. twitter mm. but um, we we couldn't and uh, they said that you know you're not allowed to use vpn is there like you know are you aware of this or what no, could I, be the I reason mean, i mean the, the the law listen there are many things that are that are not allowed right it's 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 just that it's it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, like uh, i believe that in in pakistan even 
they they have got piracy laws as well. And I, <laughs> I was like, and I was like, the the, the thing is that. Uh, if you're using, let's suppose you're using a VPN, right? They are they have most likely created this law so that if they want to, you know, access yeah, your access you, they they, they, they can. They have they have this. They they can so basically. It won't be too difficult. Yeah, it won't be too difficult. But the thing is that nobody's going to like if you if you've hacked like a PS5, nobody nobody's going to raid your house and say that you've hacked a PS5. They're not going to do that. So it's 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 basically some of these laws. Like we always knew that there were uh, like. Uh, uh, we were being monitored. We always knew that, right? But uh, there are laws that are created so that uh, people can access, uh, you know, people can have access through the law to you. But they're not really going to, you know, uh, punish you for using a VPN. Although, if it's, uh, although I do say that if something is uh, like, uh, if you think that something is uh, is not allowed by law, don't do it. But then you have the, the Tor network, so. That's what you have. And I mean, uh, using these, like, you know, measures to keep yourself secret could be for, like, you know, people can use it for nefarious reasons, yes. like, you know, for using the dark web yeah. and to do illegal things. Yeah. They would need pr uh, privacy. Mm. So um, doesn't it, like, you know, raise hackles? No, dark web, first of all, dark web is not all that bad, okay? Dark web is sometimes, it's... it's, really it's Really, like, yeah, dark web, yeah, dark web is not all that bad. It's uh, people say that's a terrible place. It's not actually. You can sometimes get very good information. You can get very good recipes from the dark web. Like that, that's that's like super, very very good recipes from the dark web. But uh, the 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 thing with this con uh, conversation or this talk is that I'm actually talking about the people who want to be private on the internet and privacy safer, because. Y y People who are smart will probably not be connecting to the internet if they're they're really really like they want to be private. So that's the thing they'll use all forms of communication. But that's what this talk is about. Because if uh, if you're doing something which I I and I believe that in order to keep everybody safe, the government needs to have you know some security. They can only have that if they have they have if they're monitoring. So that's the thing. Uh, lots of uh, like you know um, banking data has been hacked. Yeah. How was that done? Like, you know, what methodology have they used? Because they've got all inf all the information about us, about our account, our account numbers, our ID card numbers. How do they get access? Well, I mean, what methodology do they well, use? Well, you see, there are bots that can read uh, data that is on your screen. So they probably just read your screen. Like, literally, they read your screen. It could be possible. Like, if you're accessing through a proprietary uh, piece of technology, You've got no idea whether it's reading your screen or not. So if it re is reading your screen, like have you ever seen that the 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 ads that you get are in the affordable range always? Yeah, that's because that's because they that's because they, they have us. yeah they they know they know how much money you have in your bank account. So that's that's the thing. Uh, two very short questions. How algorithm works? Um, I'm. I don't really know. Like there are different ways algorithms work. It really depends on the algorithm. So it's basically like um, the algorithm for a, I'm just going to give you an example that the A star pathfinding algorithm is basically what it does is uh, in it's it's a video game thing. It's not it's not related to privacy. But I'm just going to give you an example. It's basically code that runs and calculates a path using nodes. So what it does is if you have a point and you need to get to point B, it's going to create nodes around the around the object which needs to travel, and it's going to detect collisions. And if and if there is no collision, that means the path is clear. So that's an algorithm. It works by creating nodes around nodes, small points around the object, and it sees whether something is colliding with it or not. And if it's not, then it creates a path to to that to that point. That's an example of an algorithm. If you're talking about pri uh, like uh, related to this, there are various algorithms, some of which I don't know about really. But they're really, if the spyware doesn't really need an algorithm, it's just spyware. It can just track you. That's that's it. Okay. Uh, despite logging our profiles, are we still safe? What's no. say again? Do our profiles, social media profiles, on pe hum log lagate hain. To kya log lagane ke baad hum log safe hain? Lock lagane ke baad. Ha, lock. Which lock? Profile lock. 
password. Oh, passwords. Okay. Uh, with passwords, actually, nobody can access your account. But the problem is that if somebody is accessing your data and what you're typing, let's suppose uh, I didn't talk about keyloggers, mm -hmm. but if you've got a keylogger on your browser, or if the if the, if the if the um, if for some reason Facebook or some co company gets hacked and they have got a keylogger they can actually see what you're typing on the screen. So that data can be used. Like if you're conversing with somebody and they cannot have a screen reader on, they can basically see what you're, the conversations by just looking at the, looking at what you're typing. Yeah, yes, that, that, that's what, uh, yes, but he's saying that if you have got your, like if nobody has access to your password, it's unlikely that they will be able to hack you. They will have access to your account. But it, that does not mean they cannot see what's in your account because if they have a keylogger, they can get an idea of what you're doing. And they can also get an idea of what uh, videos you're watching, what pages you're visiting, what kind of groups you have, which will give, you, give them an idea of what kind of uh, person this person is, which uh, can be harmful, especially if you want to be a person who wishes to keep to themselves. Does that answer your question? ये बताइएगा AI और मशीन लर्निंग जो है ये क्या ये डबल एज्ड सॉर्ड है यानी जहां ये आपकी प्रोटेक्शन में मुआवन हो सकती है वहीं इसको जो हैकर्स हैं या जो अटैकर्स हैं वो भी तो ट्रेन कर सकते हैं ना कि वो तो ये इसका फ्यूचर आप क्या देखते हैं AI का रिगार्डिंग यही प्राइवेसी एंड प्रोटेक्शन आई थिंक दैट AI इज कैन हेल्प अस फाइंड बग्स इन कोड that's what it can do. I think it can f help us find bugs in code. It can make us uh, make us better debuggers, and it can also run tests. And if there's a bug, it can suggest th what we should do about that bug. But as far as I can tell, of course, whatever you train your AI on, it's going to, you know, do do the thing that you train it on. But uh, it's not it's not really something that I should, I'm really concerned about. That AI is going to make everything bad and stuff. सेकेंड क्वेश्चन ये कि देखें ये अभी जितनी गुफ्तु हुई है ये प्राइमरीली उस डाटा के मुतलिक हुई है या जो आपके इख्तियार में बहुत सी चीज़ें हमारे इख्तियार में नहीं होती जो हमसे मुतलिक है और ऑनलाइन पड़ी हुई हैं आज कल आप देखिए तो इतना खौफनाक ट्रेंड है कि ये रील्स हैं शॉर्ट्स हैं किसी राह चलते किसी के वैमो गुमान में भी नहीं है और वो प्राइवेसी ब्रीच हो जाती है और नेट पर डला हुआ होता और अक्सर वो उसमें ब्लैक मेलिंग स्टफ भी शामिल हुआ होता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली और हालत यह है कि अगर आप सोशल मीडिया में उसको रिपोर्ट करें यह मेरा अपना तजर्बा है कि वो उसको रिमूव ही नहीं करते कि कोई कम्यूनिटी स्टैंडर्ड वायलेट नहीं हुए इट इज़ वेरी ऑड एंड वेरी सरप्राइजिंग और खौफजदा भी करने वाली बात है एक तो ये पहलू हो गया दूसरा यह है कि जैसे आरकाइव डॉट ओ आर जी है तो वो वो ऑनलाइन डेटे को प्रिजर्व कर रही होती है हमारे यहाँ भी आज से आप समझे करीबन 25, 26, 28 साल पहले जब ये इंटरनेट आया तो बहुत सी चीज़ें थी जो हमने एक्सपेरिमेंटली ट्राई की जिस तरह ब्लॉगिंग हो गई या ये जियो सिटीज़ होते थे पाँच एम बी दस एम वो फ्री स्पेस देते थे तो लोग ट्राई करते थे कि हम देखें तो सही कि वेबसाइट कैसी बनेगी वो सारा शो किया ही होता था लेकिन वो आपको बहुत सा डेटा मिल जाएगा वो ये अरकाइव के थ्रू ही मुमकिन है कि मैं या कोई उसको पसंद ना करे कि यार ये ये मेरा डिजिटल फुटप्रिंट नहीं होना चाहिए सो द क्वेश्चन इज इज देर अ वे कि आप अपना सारा डिजिटल फुटप्रिंट मैक्सिमम हद तक इरेज कर सके नो देर इज बट आई कैन टेल यू अबाउट दिस दैट दैट लुक स्मिथ इज अ पर्सन दैट आई फॉलो ऑन यूट्यूब नाउ ही इज लाइक सुपर इंटर प्राइवेसी Uh, he never gets caught on the phone because he lives in the woods. <laughs> so, so th that's what he does. But uh, he has access to the internet. Obviously, he does. But uh, he is like super private. So he he lives in the woods. If you live in live in the countryside, I mean, if, uh, like urban countryside, you'll not have this problem. It's unlikely that you'll have a problem. So people are going to catch you on phone or something like that. Assalamu alaikum. मेरा क्वेश्चन बस सिंपल सा है क्या हमारा जो व्हाट्सएप है इसको हमारी जो भी इदारे हैं या प्राइवेट पर्सन है उसको हैक कर सकता है या नहीं कर सकता हैक जिससे वो डेटा वो निकाल लेते हैं मतलब नहीं उनके पास अब सारा डेटा होता है व्हाट्सएप भी एक्सेस हो 100 परसेंट वो ये जो इन यूएस राइट 
uh, not in the US actually, I believe it was in the US, I'm not sure, but WhatsApp has a team which filters images. Uh, they cannot filter images if they do not know what images are being exchanged. So they have to filter images because there's some illegal images that were that, that in some Euro, in European countries and the US it's not allowed. So they will be searching for that and there's actually a good morning meme, good morning meme that is related to India. So Indians love to say good morning to each other for some reason, right? And it, and it absolutely destroyed their servers, WhatsApp servers. So it destroyed it because when they started filtering the images, there were so many from India that they were just got, got destroyed. एक दूसरा सवाल एक दूसरा क्वेश्चन सर इसको भी ले लें तो अक्सर ये वेबसाइट्स पे जब हम ए की वेबसाइट हो या एफ की वेबसाइट्स हो वो हमसे डिमांड करते हैं कि पासवर्ड्स आप ऐसा लगाएं जिसमें से डॉट्स भी हो कैपिटल वर्ड्स भी हो स्मॉल लेटर्स इसमें वो लॉजिक बताते हैं दो शोज कि इससे पासवर्ड स्ट्रॉन्ग होता है इसको एक्सेस नहीं कर सकते हैक नहीं हो सकता इस यहाँ तक क्या सदाकत थी इस बात पर इसके अंदर ये है कि जो डीक्रिप्ट जो डीक्रिप्टिंग एल्गोरिदम्स होते हैं ना जो कि इनको आई बिलीव डीक्रिप्टिंग एल्गोरिदम्स कहते हैं आई डोंट रिमेंबर बट देयर इज अलगोरिदम विच विच कैन बेसिकली गेस योर पासवर्ड राइट इफ यू हैव गॉट डॉट्स एंड स्पेशल करेक्टर्स इट बिकम्स मोर डिफिकल्ट फॉर दैट मशीन टू डू इट्स थिंग दैट्स वॉट हैपन्स इफ यू हैव गॉट्स लेटर्स जस्ट लेटर्स राइट एंड नथिंग एल्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी साइडली ईजियर फॉर दैट मशीन टू know what your password is but if you're if you have got special characters you're basically making its job more difficult sometimes it will take it years for it to understand what your password is like to get an idea of what your password is so thank nice. you acha dekhe baazu ka tha hum protection ke mayars karte hain और वो हमें उल्टे भी पड़ जाते हैं मसलन 15, 18, 20 साल पहले मैंने सॉफ्टवेयर्स वगैरह आते थे कि फोल्डर के ऊपर आप प्रोटेक्शन लगा दें पासवर्ड लंबे लंबे पासवर्ड लगा दिए वैसे ही फॉर नो रीज़न फॉर नो गुड रीज़न बस लगा दिए अब वो फाइल्स ओपन कर रहे होते हैं तो कुछ याद नहीं कि वो क्या है तो आपकी अपनी प्राइवेसी अगर अपने हाथों ही कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ हो जाए कि आपके अपने एक्सेस में ना रहे तो ऐसे में क्या किया जाए या बस इन लीला पढ़ ली जाए uh okay well, your own privacy uh well, there's nothing not much you can do about it you can just uh, no use crying over spilled milk wali baat ho gayi hai but if you forget your password apps i know some people who forget their uh, facebook password and they have got another account <laughs> so what you can do assalam alaikum Uh, मेरा सवाल ये है कि जो मेटा uh, डेटा है उसको सोशल फैब्रिक को मैनिपुलेट करने में कैसे इस्तेमाल किया जाता है मेटा डेटा जी जी मतलब हम सब लोगों का जो डेटा होगा वो हम लोगों की पर्सनालिटी को जाहिर करता था ऐसी बात है तो हम सब को लोगों को मैनिपुलेट करने के लिए ऑब्वियसली एक लार्ज स्केल पे इस्तेमाल किया जाएगा उसको तो कैसे इस्तेमाल किया जाता है वेरियस मैथड जस्ट मोर देन वन आई मीन इफ यू नो वॉट दर पर्सन बिहेवियर इज यू कैन से थिंग्स टू मेक दम डू थिंग्स it's as uh, psychology as well as uh, there are various methods of control and in ke ye hai ki agar mujhe ye pata chal jaye aap kis kisam ke insaan hai to main wo aisi baatein kahunga jo aap inspire karenge uske baad ek waqt aisa aayega ki aap kisi ko kahe ki wo kool jaye bhi se wo bhi se kool jayega lekin uske liye aapko inspire karna padta hai wo cheez jisko wo kehte hain na ki populist i believe ko jo hai na populist jo insaan hota hai wo yahi karta hai wo ye dekhta hai ki behavior kya logo ka kis taraf unka trend hai फिर उसके हिसाब से बात कर, बात नहीं करता है फिर एक वक्त ऐसा आता है कि वो कहता है कि कूद जाओ वो कूद जाते हैं फिर राइट्स होते हैं फिर हर चीज़ होती है अच्छा एक और चीज़ बता दीजिए व्हाट्सएप पे जो लिखा हुआ था एंड टू एंड इंक्रिप्टेड का क्या मतलब है उसका मतलब ये है कि जब आपकी डेटा आपके फ़ोन से निकलती है तो उसके ऊपर एक इंक्रिप्शन एल्गोरिदम जो है उस डेटा को इंक्रिप्ट करता है और जो जो जिस फ़ोन के ऊपर पहुंचता है उसके पास उसकी की होती है उसकी डिक्रिप्शन की होती है तो उस फ़ोन के पास होती है डिक्रिप्शन की और जो यहाँ से आपका फ़ोन जो है उसके ऊपर एक इंक्रिप्शन एल्गोरिदम चलता है वो डेटा फिर जाती है थ्रू द इंटरनेट उस फ़ोन की तरफ जाती है और उसके पास वो की होती है स्पेसिफिक इंक्रिप्शन के लिए वो फिर उसको खोलती है और फिर आपके पास वो मैसेज आ जाता है डेटा डायरेक्ट टू द नंबर जाता है या कहीं से होके जाता है नहीं वो उनके सर्वर्स के थ्रू ही आता है लेकिन सर्वर से जान सर्वर पे होने से पहले आई बिलीव के सर्वर नहीं आई थिंक सर्वर पे इंक्रिप्शन उसकी लगती है 
आई थिंक अभी फोन से जब जा रहा होता तब उस वक्त इंक्रिप्शन ही लगती है मुझे इसका एक्चुअली आइडिया नहीं है कि इंटर इंक्रिप्शन का हाँ इंटर इंक्रिप्शन में यही होता है आपका जो फोन है उससे इंक्रिप्शन लग के जाती है इंक्रिप्शन आपके फोन से लग के फिर जाती है मसला ये ना कि व्हाट्सएप के पास भी वो की होती है अच्छा चले थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू लेकिन हमें ना ये नहीं पता कि व्हाट्सएप की ट्रू एंड टू एंड इंक्रिप्शन है या नहीं है सिग्नल की है बिकॉज उनका कोड ओपन है द कोड इज ओपन सो वी नो फॉर सर्टन दैट दैट सिग्नल हैज एंड टू एंड टू एंड इंक्रिप्शन नंबर वन नंबर टू इज दैट वेन व्हाट्सएप वॉज पॉट when it was bought the the owner of whatsapp said i have sold my uh, sold my consumers privacy to them that's something he said something along those lines i'm not sure what it was but he said something along those lines well mera question ye hai ke like aaj kal waise bhi kafi facebook pe jo hai wo memes vagaira bhi kafi post ho rahe hain ke jab hum call kar rahe hote hain whatsapp par to wo jo hai wo hamari agency jo hai ke jo bhi adare vagaira hote hain to wo jo hai wo कॉल्स और जो वीडियो कॉल्स हैं वो भी रिकॉर्ड हो रही होती हैं या नहीं हो रही होती यू शुड बी वर्ड अबाउट दैट नहीं उसकी वजह पता है क्या है कि प्राइवेसी uh, वगैरह जो है ना वो मसला इस चीज़ का नहीं है मसला इस चीज़ का है कि कोई अगर आपके आपके जो चीज़ें जो कि आप जो कि आप इंटरनेट पे कर रहे हैं नो बडी बेसिकली यूज इज इट टू हार्म यू ट्रिक यू तो बेसिकली हैज डेटा अबाउट योर वॉइस रिकॉर्डिंग इट डजेंट मैटर राइट आई मीन इट डज मैटर बट फॉर दोज पीपल जो कि बहुत हाँ हाँ मलिशियस कंटेंट है बेसिकली मलिशियस कंटेंट होगा तब आपको तब आपको वरी करना होगा बट इफ इज नॉट मलिशियस तो आपको क्यों कोई फिक्र नहीं होनी चाहिए और दूसरा ये कि जब लाइक जो वेबसाइट्स होती हैं जैसे लाइक अगर आपको कोई नंबर वगैरह चाहिए यू के बेस का तो आप जाके वहाँ वेबसाइट पर कोई भी वेबसाइट जैसे कि होती है वहाँ पर यू के बेस नंबर अवेलेबल होते हैं सेल के लिए तो वहाँ पर वो मेल मांगते हैं तो अगर जैसे ही साइन अप करते हैं मेल से तो वो हमारा जो सारा डाटा होता है मेल का वो उनके पास ऑटोमेटिकली जाता है इंक्लूडिंग वीडियोस और पिक्चर्स नो नॉट वीडियोस एंड पिक्चर्स उनको सिर्फ आपका ईमेल जाता है ताकि अगर कभी आइडेंटिफाई करना पड़ जाए आपको तो कर सकते हैं ये ये भी उसका भी था ना ये जो बिट कॉइन्स का और इनका भी मसला हुआ था कि नो योर कस्टमर इन्होंने एक निकाली थी बात मेल की वजह से हुआ हाँ देन दे नीड टू नो हु इट इज सो इफ आई मीन इफ पीपल नो वॉट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिपार्टमेंट सॉ डिपार्टमेंट नो हु यू आर जस्ट मलिशियस एज लॉन्ग इज नॉट डूंग एनीथिंग मलिश डोट नीट टू वरी अबाउट एनी थिंग ये तो ये होता है कि अगर आप इंटरनेट किसी उसके अंदर किसी कैफे में बैठे हैं ऐसा कुछ हो तो वहाँ पर अगर कोई मिडल मैन द मिडल अटैक करते फिर मसला होता है बेसिकली ये तो सबके पास हमारी डेटा होती है वो तो मसला नहीं है मसला ये इस बात का होता है कि इट्स नॉट यूज टू हार्म यू जस्ट मीन साइको फ्राम फ्राम अ डिपार्टमेंट जिस विश टू हार्म यू ये मसला होता है हाँ फिर तो इफ दे समझ टेकिंग लॉ इन देर हैंड दे एब्सोलूटली हैव टू मैं तो इस चीज़ को इनफैक्ट कहता हूँ कि मॉनिटरिंग जरूरी है मैं तो कोई स्टेट जो है सही तरह चल ही ना सके